Thank you very much. Welcome to Maples Pavilion. Here on this Sunday evening, Iowa State and Stanford meeting for the first time in 15 years, and the Cardinal off to a great start. Their final home game of the season, and Bellinger connects for the first basket of the night for the Cyclones. She is their big-time three-point shooter. When they need a bucket, when they need that three, that's who they look for. She gets them on the board. It's got to be a sigh of relief for the Cyclones. Starting this game a little tight. For Weisbro, Roy Philpott, so glad you could join us tonight. Cardinal upset in this same game a year ago at the hands of Ole Miss. Mary Oppen was fouled on the way up. She's got all four Stanford points to start. Take a look at tonight's most reliable player brought to you by Xfinity. Audi Crooks stole the show literally on Friday night with a 40 piece and 12 rebounds. She only missed two shots and she attempted 20. It was a, a performance for the ages. And not only that, it was the comeback from 20 points down. It was the story that we found out, you know, that she had lost her father when she was 16. Always says a prayer to him before the game to you know, just make sure that she feels settled in her best place spiritually. And just what an unbelievably composed performance for somebody's debut in the NCAA tournament. You attempt 20 shots and you make 18, chances are a lot of those attempts were close to the bucket. You take a look at the shot chart from Friday night and the comeback against Maryland. And all those green indicators tell you that those were makes. 18 out of 20, I'm no mathematician, about 90%. I'll take your word for it. It was pretty <laughs> darn good. A lot of buzz around the country for sure. Yeah, the social media buzz was certainly out there. Leah Boston tweeted how impressed she was with Audie Crooks. She even got the Iowa State Police Department. That's right. Tweeting about her, saying some crooks you just can't catch. Emily Ryan from downtown, and that'll tie us up at six. So the conversation you and I had about, you know, point production coming from other places than Audie Crooks, in my opinion, if Crooks gets 25 or less, even 20 or less, Iowa State's got to hit 10 threes tonight. Here he up and off the glass. Whoa, she is spectacular tonight. Came ready to play. This is, as we've heard other coaches describe her as we're seeing it ourselves, this is the best post player that nobody talks about. Here he is a top WNBA prospect looking in the next season. Ryan, the senior outside to Brown, the freshman. Big win for Baylor in Blacksburg in a game that just concluded moments ago. Can't say that that was stunning given the fact that Liz Kitley is out for the remaining portion of the season, which is now over for the Hokies. Yeah, it's a tough go for the Hokies to, you know, with Kitley, they are such a different team. They're still talented without her, and this is what you're going to see. Kiki Uriopin is going to try to bring Crooks outside of that paint. She's got the nice touch off the glass. She can put it on the floor powerfully, move really well. I mean, they're going to stretch Crooks as far as they can. Oskana twirling around the high ball screen in a foul called in the interior. Veteran officiating crew tonight led by Jesse Dickerson, Julie Promenhoek, and Infini Robinson. Saw them Friday and they did an outstanding job. This has been a well officiated NCAA tournament here in Stanford. First bucket for Cameron Brink and she wanted the foul. She got great position. I mean, it was really just to the left of the bucket there and that's what she works so hard to get, Erie often does as well. It's all that work they do beforehand. Okay. Bellinger, a quick three. We see you, Anna. Second triple of the game, and they'll call that a long two, so make it 10 to eight. And jump shot was saved. And a miraculous play by Nymir Dew to keep it in bounds off the block. Yeah, that was a huge hustle play. No, great recovery defense by Brink. Two off the mark. And tapped out of bounds back to the Cardinal in the two-point game. And the Stanford team, you know, you're led by upperclassmen, Cameron Brink, Hannah Jump, you're often the junior. And you look at this Iowa State team, and they are, this is the freshman Fat Five, you know, running into town here. Crooks, a freshman. You know, Addie Brown, a freshman at McDonald's, All-American. Rihanna Jackson, Jalen Briston, just a few to mention for this team who's got a lot of talent and youth. And an offensive foul. Crooks claps with her approval. Goes back to ISU. And the first foul on Cameron Brink playing in her final game at Maples tonight. If you're Iowa State, your best offense is to get creative and try to create foul. So Brink's got one first quarter with five minutes left. That's a good signing for the Cyclones. Now, you, know, you may want to try to get that ball in the Crooks, see if she can body up with the Erie offense. Get a call going. 
Jackson surveys. Amir Du has been active in the early going. Another three on the way. Here's Lapolo. And another offensive foul on the moving screen. An impressive start for Kiki Iriafin. Eight points so far in our first quarter. Three rebounds as well as the Stanford Cardinal now to a two-point advantage. NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Another dance in Maples on a Sunday night, 10 to 8. Stand for the 2 seed leading Iowa State, the 7 seed. So glad you could join us alongside of Brooke Weisbrod. I am Roy Philpon. It's still a buzz in the air with what Iowa State did back on Friday night, that 20 point comeback, the second largest in NCAA tournament history. Yeah, everybody was talking about it. I mean, it was an incredible effort team wise, and certainly what Audie Crooks did individually was a performance for the ages. You know, 40 points on 18 of shooting, but it was a team effort. And I thought Emily Ryan with her 14 assists, the outside shooting, the unselfish play. This is what the tournament's all about. Like, this was a great night for women's basketball. Welcome to March. That is our Wendy's fueling the run. And all smiles and a lot of dancing and celebrating here in Stanford, California after the fact. And we mentioned the buzz on social media afterwards as well. Just had the country talking when a freshman dropped 40 points in the 12 boards. So efficient, and let's see what she has in store for an encore tonight. Brooke, it does feel like Iowa State has weathered that early Stanford storm in Kiki Ariafin's eight points. Crooks the turn, and this time short. Well, getting the early foul on Cameron Brink certainly helps if you're Iowa State. Getting a couple of three-point shots from Bellinger. I mean, you have to have that attitude of we're not going away. We know you're on your home floor. You know, you're gonna have to send us out of here. And Ariafin. You know, maybe the only bad shot she's taken this game. Yeah, for right now, Iowa State's got to just keep the ball moving, try to get the best shot they can. Andy Brown also trying to get involved in this offense. How about Bellinger? She's got two threes, missed the mid-range. Anna Bellinger in the face mask tonight after she nearly broke her nose against Maryland on Friday. With Dimitri on the floor for the first time. Very often again, baseline jumper is there. She's got 10. The Pac-12 most improved player. Only Kiki Ariafin and Angel Reese averaged 18 and 11 this season. Is her numbers incredible? 12 more points a game this year, seven more boards. And Ooh, Brown was out. fouled. That goes on Dimitri. That's her first. Crowd shows its appreciation for that call. <laughs> Not often these, these fans, you don't hear a lot of boos from Stanford fans. We'll take another look at this one. And just enough of a touch right in front of the official on the far side. I'm imagining if you were called for a similar foul back in the day, Coastal Carolina, you would have had something to say about it. You, just, you might have saw a quick tee. Ryan trying to feed Crooks, finally does against Erie Offen, scoreless so far. In and out off the glass. Corralled by Addie Brown, another freshman, and she was fouled. And that will go against Dimitri again, her second in the last 25 seconds. Yeah, I mean, I would say should try to make this game physical. Stanford, a team that likes spacing, passing. They're gonna contain you on defense. It's going to be a battle inside. These loose balls after rebounds, you know, this is big. So you got to be able to try to secure some of those, even just for your confidence if you're Iowa State. Big story in the tournament today. Duke's upset in Columbus against number two seed Ohio State. A big win for Coach Lawson. Here's a steal. Boscana will shoot a pair. Boy, she wanted three the hard way and was mad at herself for not completing the layup. A terrific bounce back and recovery from Bosgana. Right, we said the quicker team that bounces back after mistakes. Here you go, not even one possession. And Bosgana gets the ball back with the opportunity to put her team ahead more. Now well, she's coming off her career high 18 in the win against Norfolk State. The bench loved it. It was a quiet 18. She started stuffing that stat sheet in the second half and 
Tara Vanderveer, the Hall of Fame head coach for the Cardinal, told us earlier today, she's kind of found her groove and found mm -hmm. her rhythm. We're going to need her to make it to Cleveland in the Final Four. It goes pretty unnoticed, Roy, but between Brooke Dimitri and Elena Bozgana, they averaged 13 points, six boards in only 20 minutes, and both of them shoot over 40%. I think that's a great asset to have in addition to your post players. Cyclones without a bucket in the last three minutes. Crooks on the spin was bumped. And two free throws coming for Iowa State. Now we mentioned the Hall of Fame head coach Tara Vandeveer, the all-time winningest coach in college basketball history. These are two of the longest tenured coaches on the hardwood. Bill Fenley has been the head coach in Ames going back to 1995. And Tara Vandeveer, of course, in her 38th season, three national championships, all the Final Fours. Their first meeting on the hardwood since back in 2009 in the big dance. Two coaches that have a lot of respect for each other. And one more coming for Crooks. 66% on the season. Do you remember today when we were listening to the scouting report about Audie Crooks and Tempe Brown, the assistant coach for Stanford, said, she's not going to push you. She's going to move you. And that's exactly what she did to Kiki Arioffman, who doesn't look like she can be moved anywhere. It's going to be a fun test of strength down low for these ladies. I'm, I'm enjoying the battle already. Brink's back in the game now. Brink with the one foul on the floor and the baseline jumper from 15. No. Emily Ryan the rebound. Now Ryan missed the first nine games of the season with a foot injury. Now healthy. Her leadership has been sorely missed. Early and Crooks cranks one home with a wry smile afterwards. <laughs> These fans don't like it. Cameron Brink set up to take a charge. You know, she's definitely going to try to do what she can to get Crooks into foul trouble as well. This is a good mind game going. And Brink wants the ball right away. Yeah, she does. Elbow jumper, no. Advantage Crooks on these last two possessions. I mean, the early battle to get position is fun as well. Brown for three. Is. Iowa State grabs the advantage at 14 to 13. Uh, some life for the Cyclones who take the lead here. And if I'm Stanford, I'm going right to Brink, and I'm saying, hey, you got to charge the rim. Brink, patience inside, couldn't connect. The Cyclones have their first lead. Ryan, the step back triple. There it is again. A 9 nothing run for the Cyclones. Some 2,200 miles from home and the bounce pass from Bozgana. Karam's out of bounds, back to ISU. Artie Crooks setting back up and she's tried a couple different positions this time. Well, definitely could have been a charge. That was a lot of physicality down there in the post. And then Emily Ryan, a little brush screen, you go under. And Ryan, confident enough to take the three. Addie Brown feeling it, an early heat check. A 12-0 run for Iowa State. 20 to 13, our score, and Tara Vandeveer has seen it up. The Cyclones with a flurry of three-pointers. Super talented freshman Audie Crooks, three points, three boards in the early going. And we noticed before the game on Friday night, she takes a moment, collects herself, spends some time looking above and speaking to herself. She was asked about it post game after the comeback win against Maryland on Friday. Before every game, I just try to take a moment um, and I pray and I uh, am kind of seeking guidance from my father. He passed away when I was 16 in 2021. So uh, I just try to, to kind of take a second and ground myself and, and uh, tap into my uh, spiritual side and just know that everything's gonna be okay and he's got the best seat in the house. That is the late Jimmy Crooks, her father who passed away in 2021. Parents divorce at an early age, but remain close with both her mom and her dad, and in fact, her mother, Michelle, in the building tonight. And a look at Michelle Cook as she's always close by with her daughter. 
And it is a touching moment for a player that remains so well grounded and humble mm -hmm. despite putting up 40 points in a game like that her NCAA tournament debut inside a chance for three and coming off the bench and Nunu Aguera and that's a great way to contribute averaging less than six points per game coming in uh, look like I have state might have changed their defense coming out into a triangle two or a box and one we, we talked about those junk defenses that one looks like a box and one and then Stanford takes immediate advantage Great job by Nunu to get to the rim. You know, just making the final point too on, on Crooks and her humility or her talent. I saw her about an hour, hour and a half after the game and I, I said, your phone's gotta still be blowing up, right? You know, she said, you know what? I put it on DND. Do not disturb the best feature possible on an iPhone. Shot clock, game clock, virtually identical. A good start for the visitors from Ames out of the Big 12. Brown to Ryan, wide open, and another triple. Down it goes, Iowa State. Six of eight from deep to start, and a statement being made as the Cyclones made each of their last five shots to wrap up our first 10 minutes. We said Iowa State was gonna have to hit at least 10 threes tonight to get that opportunity to beat the number two seed. Guess what? They got six already. Already one upset, one major upset in the books today in the NCAA tournament. Iowa State looking for its own upset on the road. 23 to 16, 10 minutes in. And with Brooke Weisbro, Roy Philpott. We were here a year ago when Coach O and company with Ole Miss took care of business in a similar situation. Cardinal were a one seed. Cameron Blink was suffering from the flu, missed the first game in the dance a season ago, and the Rebels found a way to eliminate the Cardinal 54 to 49. And for Tara Vanderveer, she's talked about this a lot with us this week. The memories of last year, the lessons learned, better leadership from within. They're trying to avoid that similar outcome. And Boy, they were held in check by Ole Miss and a Rebels team that just locked them down defensively. Yeah, I mean, you saw the, the highlights. There there was just no space to breathe when it came to Ole Miss in their defense. And now Audie Crooks getting deep in the paint there. Great defense by Cameron Brink to not foul, not go for the block, just play straight up. And Stanford is going to have to find some kind of rhythm offensively. You know, we talked about the junk defenses that Iowa State could throw at you, but they, they got to find just some rhythm here with Cameron Brink off the screen and roll. We have yet to kind of see that balance. Ripped away by Bellinger. Iowa State controls with a seven-point lead. High ball screen for Brown, and the pass for Crooks goes out. Yeah, that one's not going to work. You, you cannot go to anywhere on the same side where Erie Offen and Brink are and expect to get a lot pass. Well, how dominant was South Carolina earlier today? Oh the bench scoring for Don Staley's Gamecock so impressive. They steamrolled North Carolina to advance to the Sweet 16 and remain undefeated. Foul inside. This one goes against the Cyclones. We mentioned the upset. Duke came back to beat Ohio State in Columbus, the number two seed Buckeyes. And one of my final four picks, I should say. LSU <laughs> trailed by seven kind of midway through that second quarter, and then everything started to change at Baton yeah. Rouge and ended up pulling away from a very good and underrated Middle Tennessee team. How about the Offen just straight getting up with that rebound over Audie Crooks? And then for the finish, what a pass. There it goes with Polo. Offen with 12. The lead down to five. Boy, Reagan Richardson from Duke had an incredible game. I, I love her confidence, the way she's scoring. Duke is so hard to score on, by the way. Defensively, they're one of the best out there. The block by Brink on Audi Crooks, and it goes back to Stanford. No, don't forget the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship continues tonight on TNT and TBS. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. And Kelsey Jones for Iowa State was just helped off into the Cyclones locker room. 
As Stanford gets the ball back, trailing 23 to 18. And a foul down low. Addie Brown can't believe it. Seen a lot of complaining early on to this veteran officiating crew. Which is not going to help. And any player coach, you know, that spent some time in the game will tell you that. It, Addie Brown's got to not just try to fight with position for Brink. Brink's too fast, too long. She's going to set her up. She's got to get off of Brink to get back in front of her. We mentioned Kelsey Jones banged up on that last play. Hit the deck hard in the knee of Hannah Jump hit right behind her head. So we'll give you an update on that as soon as we receive one. Brink receives the rebound, missed the chippy. Well, that's the rhythm you want to see if you're Stanford. I mean, those are great plays, energy plays, put back. So you imagine she'll try to get it back on defense. That's another area where they can start kick-starting some of these shots to feel easier. Brooks with position, defended by Brink. She'll take her time and go to work. That high red district, another block and a jump ball. Stanford gets it on the arrow. And listen to this crowd at Maples. I could watch a one-on-one -on -one matchup of this. This is fantastic. You've got the best shot blocker in the country. The freshman phenom who just dropped 40, trying to get crafty in there, undersized, but the strength there. Jump back to Ariofen. Short with a baseline jumper. Brink lost it out of bounds. Well, good hustle. The senior point guard, Emily Ryan. When Crooks gets drawn out of the lane, like when Ariofen pulls her out, if it's a missed shot, like, you've got to see four other Cyclone jerseys crashing the board. Crooks is not going to be able to get back in there and get a board. Ryan gets it back from Crooks. Crooks with position and the sweeping hook. No. Well, both bigs bothering each other on both ends of the floor Big early. Very often has been the difference for Stanford in the early going. 12 of the 18 points scored by the player with the ball, number 44. Make it 14. Just body it up. It's a great no call as well by the officials as Erie often makes that powerful move. And you're going to continue to see that from her. One possession game, Erie often. One of the top players in the country you probably haven't heard enough about. Supporting to everybody here at Maples, including all four teams that were on hand back on Friday. It'll stay on this end with eight to shoot. And for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship games on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Bellinger's been active. A step back three was blocked by Jump. And jump on the other end. She was wide open. Caroms out to Ogden. Very often with 14 and was fouled by Dew. Nymere Dew picks up her first. And the intensity of this game is so thick right now. In every position trying to get battled for it. What I would love to see, and I can't believe I'm saying this, these players just got to stop talking to the officials. Both sides. It's too much. It's eventually it's going to burn. You just got to leave it to the coaches and let them address it. There's a second foul on two. She'll get a breather. Mary Oppen missed it off of her knee and out of bounds. If you're Stanford, do you start thinking about what happened last year in no, the same moment? you do not. Absolutely not. you got to stay focused on this moment. It's not the same team, not the situation, same situation, opponent, none of that. you, you got to focus on literally this defensive possession at a time. And now what you're going to do on offense. Ryan Wyatt right. It goes out back to the Cardinal. And Iowa State now 6 of 9 from deep. They have yet to score so far in our second quarter. And still maintain a three-point lead. And Tara Vanderveer just quick to get up. She's very fiery right now, trying to give directions, inspiration, motivation to this team. And just find some, find some groove. They haven't found a groove yet, team-wise. Jump left open. That's a three, and we're tied. That's a groove getter. Watch what happens now.
Bellinger has it for Iowa State. From 16 and drains it off the screen. No fear. How about you playing a game for the, with a face mask for the first time and you still come in nailing shots. And Atabu inside was trying to body up with Brink called for the foul. Hannah jumps the all time leading three point shooter in Stanford history and here's why. You know what she was told? If you're out there, I want you shooting the ball. A rhythm three for Hannah Jump is dangerous. Kelsey, Nikki, Sinead, thank you very much. Here's a look at Bill Finley in his 29th season in Ames. A veteran head coach has his team out to a two-point lead and three-point differential. Guys, we're talking about it. It's there for Iowa State. The Cardinal, led by Hall of Famer Tara Vanderveer, got the advantage so far inside. Cam Brink, Kiki Arioffen. Really, it's Arioffen so far. The big reason why. Brink has it. Free throw line extended. Little high-low action. And a foul over the back. It'll be called on Stanford. And that'll be the second on Cameron Brink. Another different look here from Iowa State defensively. I'm going to see them looking to be in a box in one with Jones at the one. He's guarding Hannah Jump. So it, it you know, it's, you do what you can to try to throw off the offense. That's the whole point of you know, putting these defenses in at times and making the offense take time to recognize what they are. Iowa State one of eight from the floor so far in our second quarter. Still leading by two. Physical game down low. Three-pointer off the mark. That was Harriel who just checked in. And Janaya Harriel missed the triple. Cyclones get it back. Here's Emily Ryan. She wants to be a head coach one day. She has one of the louder voices you'll hear at practice day in and day out in Ames. And that's a much different and better job defensively. You know, Harriel going over the screen. You heard Nikki talk about that. They got to go over it. And then she pays it off with the three of her own. It's working on that exact shot at that exact spot on the floor all afternoon. It's shoot around for Stanford. 32 and white. And the Cardinal back in front. And a forearm by Harriel. That'll be her first. Here's Harriel off of the steal, gets it back out. Erie often the quick hot touch and the kick out from the bench. Oh, yeah. She's been working on that jump shot in the second part of the season. Tara Vanderveer telling us earlier today that that is something that she's been very impressed with and her rejuvenating her release and how she gets to the apex of the jumper. Cardinal by one, Iowa State just two points so far in our second quarter. Emily Ryan would love to change that, and the floater is short. Crooks off glass. And her biggest strength is being able to hold off the defenders how she how she does either before she gets the catch or on that offensive rebound. So that's a place where she could get some points up. Wide open for Harriel. Tracked down by Ogden and Ryan, and a jump ball. The arrow favors the Cyclones. Brooke, how impressed are you with Audie Crooks and the fact that she's been physical without fouling and now with five points? Yeah, I mean, you have to play incredibly smart basketball because you know it's going to be a physical game. And so Crooks has just got to do what she can to get touches. I mean, she hasn't looked flustered one time because she's getting she's getting pretty beat up in the post as well. And keeping her composure. Maddie Brown operating. Too strong. Tried to rip away the board. Could not. Stanford comes away with it. Ogden wide open, top of the key. I think Iowa State perfectly fine with 40 and white, 32 and white, launching threes. That is the best shot you could ask for if you're Iowa State. And, and I think Iriopin, she needs to get that ball around the elbow, maybe that short corner, and try to put the ball on the floor and create some, some bodying up with Crooks. Two of the best three-point shooters in the Big 12 and the Pac-12 defending each other tonight. Hannah Jump and, and Hannah Bellinger. They're dribbling too much. Cyclone's got to get back to passing and spacing. Under two to go in the half. Entertaining start at Maples. 
Here he often with 16. That's what I want, shooting the ball, handling the basketball right now. Like, I would want my offense, if I'm Stanford, give Ari often a touch every, every possession. Even if she doesn't shoot it, she needs to be that anchor in there, draw some defenders inside, and then get everybody else moving. Emily Ryan probing and connecting down low. It was Bill Finley who told us Thursday in the first practice session here at Maples. Coming to one of our practices, the two voices go oh, here. Wow. Mine and Emily Ryan's. Mary often missed the reverse. Outside to jump. Say this, Kiki Uriopin has been responsible for extra possessions and more points by her hustle getting on the floor. 50-50 boss had been huge for the Cardinal tonight. Ryan kept her dribble alive off glass again. Back-to-back -back -back buckets. Answer. Emily Ryan's as tough as they get. She's got 13 tonight. Nearly came up with a steal against Aguera. Tied at 31, approaching 30 seconds to go. Ari Oppen, one of her rare misses this evening. It goes back to the Cyclones, and Brooke, shot clock is off. Iowa State can play for the final possession of the half. I think they take the best shot available. I don't think you necessarily have to play for that final shot, but you know, certainly the way they've been shooting the three ball, I wouldn't be surprised if you see Ryan take that three or even Addie Brown. Six threes in the first quarter, none so far in the second. Ryan's got to go. Crooks for three. Ryan gets it back and fouled before the buzzer. Emily Ryan's going to shoot two. And it was a bang-bang play at the horn for sure. They may take a look at it, and they will. The last play is under review to see if the foul curve before triple zeros. Brooke, I will tell you in real time from our vantage point, it felt like that that whistle was blown and the foul occurred right before the horn sounded. Right, I mean, it is as close as it gets here. Well, Foul occurred at 1.0, that'll be two free throws. Maybe a little less close than I thought. <laughs> a whole second, that's a long time. It is a long time. And, and it's enough time for Stanford to get another shot. That's correct. So Harriel picks up her second. Emily Ryan, outstanding free throw shooter at 88% coming in. All Big 12 first team a year ago, All Big 12 second team this year. In the game she had Friday in the comeback against Maryland, Cyclones were down 20. Ryan scored 18, and maybe more importantly, had 14 assists. A new career high, and one more free throw coming. And she's backing up that performance. With 15 in the first half against Stanford. And Iowa State with a two-point lead at the break in search of an upset. The seven seed in position. Audie Crooks, five points, four rebounds. Kiki Irivafen has been sensational with 16 and seven. Let's get you back to the studio. Kelsey, Coach, and Shanae. And welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One inside Maples Pavilion. Two-point lead for Iowa State. Stanford in it because of Kiki Iriopin. 16 first half points to seven rebounds. She has been a true difference maker. And Emily Ryan so impressive with 15 points in the half to pace the Cyclones. Final 20 minutes headed your way right now. Nip and tuck the entire night. Brooke Weisbro, Roy Philpott. Stanford's got to get something going, and perhaps it starts with Cameron Brink. I think so. I mean, just a, a half where she went one for five from the floor. She's got to call for the ball, go get it, and try to get some offensive putbacks as well. And you know, Kiki Uriopin really led it the way for Stanford, keeping them alive with second and third chance opportunities. You got Audi Crooks held to five points in check, two for 11. Let's take a look at tonight's game track brought to you by Vesco QQQ. Crooks, five and five. Brink just made one field goal in five attempts. 
something's got to change in her final game at Maples. And if you're Bill Finley, head coach of the Cyclones, I think you got to like your position. You're feeling all right if you're the Cyclones right now. Now you're hoping your three-point shooting can still stay as hot as it was in the first half because Hannah Jump, she's that three-point shooter for Stanford. We saw a bit of her talent get to work in the first. Osgana stepped out of bounds on the rebound. It goes to the Cyclones. Iowa State has never defeated Stanford in four previous meetings. The last time came back in 2009 in the tournament. Final game of the night on the women's side. Crooks was shoved, and the foul will be called on Erie Oppen. And, Brooke, that's going to be her second. So if you're Iowa State, you've yet to really be able to have success getting out of the ball inside where she can you know, get that easy turn just like she did against Maryland. It's the catch. That's the toughest part for her, and especially in this game. So getting to the free throw line is a good sign for Iowa State. And the Cyclones take everybody on the floor and move them away from the painted area. Not even going to attempt to get the rebound. I mean, that's what they do. It, it, get, it get me anxiety as a shooter. One of two for, for sure. Crooks. And, and we've seen them kind of have that uh, way about them. And a lot of trust in their free throw shooters. Crooks has held her own tonight against Brink. Very often it's been a bit of a different story. Kiki's operated with a mid-range game. Trying to pull the freshman away from the low posts. With a bounce. She's able to get that ball and keep it so low. Her length, the way that she gains real estate, just with a step or two, and then a tough finish falling out of bounds. Belcher hit a couple of long-range shots in the first half. Against Siri Offen. Outside to Jackson for three. And a good sign for the Cyclones. Cyclones continue to stay hot from outside. That's now their seventh three of the game. Seven for 11. Audie Crooks was 18 to 20 the other night. Now they're getting it done from outside. We thought it would take at least 10 threes if Crooks didn't hit 25. But watch this move. Stutter step, little jab, and then exploding the left side. And as she gets more agile and stronger, she'll be able to finish closer to the rim. Ariana Jackson, 41% three-point shooter. Crooks just picked up her second foul. Perhaps a developing story there. Lapolo for three, and the response. I love how balanced it is on both sides of scoring. I mean, everybody with the ball in their hand feels confident looking for their three. Unexpected offense from Lapolo and Jackson on back-to-back -back possessions for both sides. Ryan continues her sharp shooting. This time inside, now with 17. How crafty is she? I feel like she's got control of the ball just in one hand. Eerie offense. Woo! Unstoppable tonight. Iowa State's lead down to one. Arioffen with 20. Crooks against Brink. Brink won that battle. Well, she grabs her chest for a moment. And may have taken a shot right at the base of her neck. Brown with a rebound. Brink appears to be okay. It has been physical down low. Outside to Brown. I was like, he checked for Brown. She was feeling it in that first half. And we start to get in the offense, and that looks to be a foul away from the ball on Bozgana. Bozgana was running down the far side as we take a look at our bracket. The winner of this game will get the winner of NC State and Tennessee. That game at 4 o'clock tomorrow in Riley at Reynolds Coliseum. Lady Vols and the Wolfpack. Texas has already advanced to the Sweet 16 with its victory against Alabama and head coach Christy Curry earlier today. One point game at Maples, Iowa State gets it back. Bellinger baseline, Natabu has it against Brink. Brink the rejection. Cyclones get it back, shot clock at 10. Jackson picked up by Ogden. How about this defense from Stanford on this possession? Ryan behind the back, got to go. Nearly got it off the glass. Yeah, Brooke, you mentioned the defense, perhaps the best possession we've seen for Stanford on that side. Brink, second field goal, wants the foul, didn't get the whistle. 
She got great position, bodied up the contact, and I'm just kind of waiting to see when she really starts to come alive. She's an emotional player, and right now you want to see that. Not in a negative way toward the officiating. I'm talking about getting her team rallied. I mean, Brooke, she's supposed to be the number two pick in the WNBA draft coming up next month. Emily Ryan is short. She'll track down her own miss and get fouled from behind. Apollo, the guilty party that time. Cameron Brink figures to be number two right behind Caitlin Clark, who's back in action on ESPN tomorrow night in primetime. And you take a look at the updated mock draft, and you got stars everywhere yeah. this go around. You cannot lose. I mean, the WNBA draft is. It, the WNBA is going to be secure, even more so for the next few years. He's got great stars coming in, young stars rising up. You know, a league that's just seen incredible numbers in championships won all across the board. I mean, I was there for the Chicago Sky a few years ago, and the atmosphere is just electric, and it's even better now. Brown wide open. They worked on that exact play yep. and shoot around the entire second half of the session, and it pays dividends. Iowa State back in front by one. Ogden for three. And she'll get it back. Maybe the longest rebound in the tournament this year. <laughs> Brink against Brown. Senior on freshman. Outside Ariopin. Well, Ryan just has a calmness about her that settles things down for her team. Running the point inside and a chance for three. More unexpected offense, Jalen Bristow. You know, Bristow, one of the freshmen we told you about. This fabulous team here, this young squad. Just a little pump fake, driving hard baseline, and taking Ogden off the bounce. You've got to have heroes. Everybody's got to show up today. Can Iowa State get this done? Five freshmen playing key roles in this NCAA tournament run for head coach Bill Finley. Hasn't really operated in the portal yet, hasn't had to. He's done an outstanding job recruiting, and he thinks this roster is built for the long haul, and tonight they're showing why. Looks like they might be in one of those junk defenses as well. Perhaps a triangle in two. Brink, I like her getting that ball up there. She's got to take charge. This is her floor. This is her last game here on this floor. I know she wants to leave it all on the line. I want to see her come alive and start to demand the ball. Final game at Maples for one of the best players in the history of the Pac-12. Crooks high off the glass. No. And Brink over the back. That is her third foul. And pleading for rebounding from her squad. This is a key situation because with Brink out, now you've got some more options if you're Iowa State. Physical game inside Cameron Brink with three personals and has to go to the bench for head coach Tara Vanderveer. Clearly over the back and right over top of Bristow. And now it's time for tonight's Need to Know brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods and Cameron Brink. Largely ineffective so far with those three personal fouls. Does have four blocks, seven rebounds, so doing it in different ways, Brooke. Yeah, de contributing defensively, no doubt. Hitting the board strong. Where she's getting herself into trouble is the fouls, and you saw her pleading with her teammates to get in a body and keep the box out going. So, you know, she's going to have to mentally and emotionally get checked back in. Player of the year in the conference, defensive player of the year in the conference, and rarefied air to be in a position to claim both awards in the same season. Currently on the bench with the three fouls, and free throws coming for Jalen Bristow. 77% on this season, and she'll get one more. Brooke, I mentioned during the break, there's some nervous energy in this arena right now. Yeah, you can feel it. Knowing what's at stake, Bristow missed a pair. Stanford gets it back. A chance to tie or go ahead with a three. Jump. An air ball. That's probably happened one or two times in her entire career. Yeah, I mean, that's a spot on shooter right there. Stanford you know, looking out of rhythm, especially with Brink on foul trouble. Erie often's been the one to show up big time today. Jump with a few shots here and there. Polo. 
getting it in as well, but where's that consistency that Stanford needs? Because Emily Ryan, she's the one bringing it tonight for Iowa State when we were talking all night about Audie Crooks on Friday. Ryan has 19. The lead back to four. And it's not only the point production and rebounds for Ryan, she doesn't turn it over. And she's going to be a fantastic head coach. I mean, look at her composure it, and her fiery skills, too. It's not, she's not just a calm presence out there. Like, she is a true leader. Another coach on the floor for Bill Finley. Brown the runner. Very often the rebound. Bounce pass to jump. Back door was open. That's how you get it done. Catch them when they're not paying attention. Stanford, a great passing team. Get them out in transition. That's your 13th assist of the game. So the ball is moving. Ryan sprung oh, free. Ryan. Another layup. She's got 21. Like Elmer's glue, that ball in her hand. You're not getting that away from her. Senior leadership, a veteran presence in the Iowa State backcourt. A true difference maker in the first game and a half of the NCAA tournament. One point away from her season high of 22 already. Here he <laughs> 22 for Kiki Iriopin. Trying to match Emily Ryan point for point. Ryan again with a path. Crooks a touch. Iriopin the rejection. Look at Iriopin sprinting down the floor. That's what I'm talking about. She wants that basketball, and they say, you can have it. Crooks oh, rips away the rebound. And Ryan traveled. Well, I didn't know she had clean possession. And they'll say it's a turnover. Let's go back to that great defense without the foul from Iriopin. Contest, you get it. And you go, look at her sprinting down the floor. The turnover, Brink loves to see it. Her team getting the ball back. We mentioned the nervous energy in this building for Cameron Brink, your last game at Maples. And with a loss tonight, your collegiate career comes to a close. She's sensing that right now. Aguera inside, working hard. We're tied at 48. Four ties, nine lead changes. Ryan, that's an offensive foul. And Agara has something to say. Two huge height plays from Nunu Agara. Boy, there's not much like a charge to get your team riled up and put a smile on Cameron Brick's face. We haven't seen that too much tonight either. Here it is. That's straight up charge, 101. Terrific heads up play defensively from Agara. Motions running high at Maples Pavilion. The lob off the rim from Dimitri. Cyclones get it back in a tie game. And Dew was fouled on the runner. Here he often clipped her, and that's going to be her third. So Brink with three, Iriopin with three. And the two Stanford stars will exchange a handshake as Brink checks back in. You see Ariopin try to play help side and just gets her enough with the body. It's the it's the swing down, Roy, versus just stand still contest. And we heard from Tara Vanderveer that that might be an issue for them tonight. She said they're possible to get into foul trouble, and that's what could hurt us. Iowa State just 5 of 10 at the line. Do miss a pair. The rebound tracked down by Bristow. High ball screen for Ryan against Cameron Brink. Weaving her way through traffic. Crooks has it, and she was bumped and fouled. And that's going to be number four on Cameron Brink. My goodness. Not even able to get one offensive possession. This is huge. I mean, if you're Iowa State, you do, to me, you do nothing but try to get your offense one more foul on the next possession. Ryan just working, working. And at that last minute here, Crooks got in. Brink's got to keep her hands up, trying to get that deflection. You get it, but also, you know, awareness of where you are in the game. You've got 
major foul trouble, so it's more important to have you in there and contest. Two for two for Adi Crooks. Brink with four fouls. Ariopin with three. Brink on the bench. Kiki on the floor. Ariopin on Crooks. There's the quickness. And the finish. 24 for Kiki Ariopin. Did you see after she faced up? They both bumped into each other, and neither one of them gave each other space. Like, those are the two strongest women on the floor right now. It's so much fun to watch them go at it. Tied at 50, less than a minute remaining in the third. Brooks yelling out instructions. She'll get it back. Boy, so calm. Five to shoot. Now the Cyclones got to go. Jackson fell down and a turnover. Ahead to Iriopin. And Jackson remains on the floor and just stepped up and is bleeding. And they will pause the action. And she has blood all over. My goodness. You can see there on the floor. Just slipped and fell yeah, well, on the dribble drive. Yep. Ran out of real estate. Oh, goodness. Just hit the floor hard and immediately grabbing her face. As the crew trying to get the floor cleaned up on the baseline, she'll get attended to by the training staff. And yeah, ran right back to the Iowa State goodness. locker room. And Jackson provided a spark earlier in the quarter with a three-pointer. And now both teams will get a chance to collect their breaths for a moment in a tie game. Just under 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. A chance to go to the Sweet 16. And this contest has provided everything you could ask for and then some. Yeah, it really has. You see the job Emily Ryan has done tonight coming off a 14 assist game Friday. And Kiki, you're often no surprise here, double double. But the way she's established herself as one of the top post players in the country tonight. I mean, the show, the stage big for Erie Offen, and she's showing up. If you're Tara Vanderveer, at what point do you consider bringing Brink back on the floor? Not, I'd say not until about the five-minute mark of the fourth quarter, wow. depending on what the score is. I mean, your most valuable player, you need her in there at clutch moments. Final game at Maples Pavilion. There's a steal. Bristow came away with it. Weaving her way through traffic, and she ran out of space. Well, a big moment there. That could have been an easy bucket for Iowa State. Instead, Stanford gets it back with 10 seconds left in the third. One of the hard things to do is when you're a freshman, everything feels so fast. So that opportunity, that ball, that big goal right there. And then you have to think there's a possibility subconsciously you're worried about slipping. You know, is there still some blood spots at the other end of the floor? You see these ladies just styled in tonight have just provided some enter entertainment. Everything we hope for. Shot clock is off. Apollo has it for Stanford. Jump the backdoor cut again. Outside Aguera. 30 minutes in, we remain tied. 10 minutes remaining at Maples Pavilion. And a chance to go to the Sweet 16 for the winner of this one. Now the stars are out tonight at Maples Pavilion. How about Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy, who just made the short trek over from the Bay Area, the former Iowa State standout, and his wife Jenna, newly married as of February. Condoleezza Rice, the former Secretary of State, in the house as well, taking in all of the action as we take a look at tonight's star stories presented by Honda. Audie Crooks, 8.7 rebounds, has been contained inside, as has Cameron Brink, but most importantly in that graphic, the four fouls for the Pac-12 Player of the Year. She remains on the bench. Yeah, and so it's got to be gut check time for Stanford. Iriofen has led the way throughout this game. Does she have enough to lead the Cardinal into the Sweet 16? We're 10 minutes away from finding out. Iriofen with 24. And Hannah Bellinger has checked back in with the face mask off. After nearly breaking her nose Friday night, she wore it for the first three quarters. It is off in the fourth, and we will see if that assists in her shooting. 
Well, it certainly seemed to help her out the other night. I'm surprised to see her take it off, but clearly a game of comfort is necessary right now. Iowa State making Stanford uncomfortable all night long. We've really yet to see the Cardinal get to a rhythm. That's going to be a foul on Crooks, trying to keep Erie Offen from staying in position. Third on the freshman Crooks. Iowa State was upset in the first round a year ago by Toledo. Stanford lost in the second round here in this building to Ole Miss as a one seed. Erie off in the mid range. Cardinal are back in front. Kiki with 26. WNBA scouts looking, just kind of saying, yeah, we're going to see you in a year. You can only imagine how much oh more goodness. she will improve between end of this season and next year. Brooks hit the deck trying to save it and could not. All smiles on the way up. Stanford gets it back with a two-point lead. I mean, this is just such a likable young woman. The hustle, the demeanor, the teamwork. I just love to see her play. And as one tweet we saw the other night, very accurately describes after this year, she's the best player in Iowa. No better pay attention, number 5-5. Five, five. The sounds of March on full display tonight. Jump the step back three, and down it goes. Cardinal by five. And Bill Finley has seen enough. How about Cameron Brink running out to midcourt to give her teammates a high five? To tell Erie Offen, thank you for leading this team. Erie Offen actually sprinting out of the tunnel right now. Great family okay. in attendance, feeling good about this recent turn of events. The Stanford lead is five. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Dave Roberts had to say about the Otani investigation. That and more after the game. Roy, Brooks, back to you. The far. Stanford trying to put this one to bed. Yes, they are, my friend. We appreciate it. Adi Crooks, the talented freshman, first team all Big 12. And it's back to a one possession game at Maples. Smart offensive play from Iowa State to go right into Crooks and challenge Brink, who has to just defend without fouling. Now, four fouls for Brink. Four fouls on the floor. Addy Brown calmly drains the elbow, Jay. Between Brown, Crooks, and Emily Ryan, does this team ever get rattled? The simple answer is no. no. <laughs> I like it when you ask me the questions on occasion, too. Aguera <laughs> triple team lost it. Out to break. Yeah. 57-54. Cameron Brink in her final game here at Stanford on the home floor. And that shot bothered by Aguera. Stanford comes away with it. A lot of time left in this one. Brink wants it. Back to Bozgana. Check it, Dimitri. Brink against Crooks. Short. Ryan for three, and she drilled it. Tied at 57. And Emma a new Ryan. season high for Emily Ryan, Brooke. Stone Cold, Emily Ryan. And every time that Emily Ryan's got the ball in transition, you don't know what she's going to do with it. She does not give it away. Brink outside to Lopolo. That's a three. Couldn't get the bounce. And the rebound by Crooks. And, and you saw Brink could only go a little bit up for that board. Did not want to get called for the over the back. Ryan thought about it. 
Inside to Brown and a turnover ripped away by Aguera. How valuable has three and white been oh in the second goodness. half? I mean, huge. And, and this is the same player that Cameron Brick looked at and said, hey, you got to box out. And she's made some big time plays tonight. Lapolo the Euro. Brown, no, ripped away by Dimitri. And a fresh 20 for the Cardinal. And Tara Vandeveer wants to talk things over. A timeout is called. And sensing the unevenness of that possession, Stanford has it with 15 to shoot when we come back. Play for each other. This is your time. This is your time. Right? Don't waste it. Don't overthink it. One play at a time, do the things that we always do. And like always, we walk out of here, we walk up the ramp, right? Our head is up, our eyes are open, we got a smile on our face, our heart is full because we did it our way. All right? 40 minutes, the Iowa State way. Here we go. The Iowa State way means a little bit more for head coach Bill Finley. Year number 29 in Ames started back in 1995. He has built his brand. And with these fabulous five freshmen he's got on the court tonight, they have given Stanford all it can handle and then some in a tie game under six minutes remaining back on the farm. An open look, that's a three, and it's short by Bozgana. Iowa State controls. Triangle and two, right? Every time out of a timeout, you'll probably see a different look from Iowa State defensively. That time, throwing another junk one, the triangle and two, just bothering Stanford enough to force them to shoot outside. Emily Ryan behind the back from 16. With the bounce, 11th lead change of the night, and Emily Ryan now with 26 points. Cardinal back to work. Brink and Ariafin on the floor. Jump the response. Her final game at Maples, and she's playing well in the second. Yeah, I like her mentality. She's been trying to look for her shot without doing too much tonight. Shooting 50% with those 13 points. They've been huge. Ryan swatted out of bounds. Bozgata and Brink, and the foul will be called on Elena. Boy, Cameron held her breath for a moment there, Didn't worried she? that was number five. I mean, the most direct eye contact with the official just saying, what are you going to throw up? 2-0 or 2-2 on this foul. And here comes the help side. Ooh, Brink with a clean block, but Poscana got with, with the body. Ryan with 26, 88% free throw shooter. One more coming. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Cyclones by two, Ryan Clutch. And one point away from her career high of 29. Lopolo open. Out of bounds and well short. Boy, very often you feel like maybe she needs to operate a little bit more in that high rent district uh, downstairs and get a touch close to the rim. Well, Emily Ryan doing a good job of kind of showing that help side and then getting back out to to contest the three point shot. And with Lopolo, like you'll live with her taking the three versus Iriafin facing up and going to work. So she's doing a good job of forcing Iriafin to pass back out. Brooks the spin, Iriafin the block. Stanford has it. And Crooks commits the foul, and that's going to be her fourth. And a good show of sportsmanship, trying to help Kiki up. Yeah, these two ladies and Cameron Brink actually all dabbed it up even before the tip tonight. And a lot of respect with each other's games. They're going to play hard to the end. They're going to fight for the ball. Already Crooks has been on the floor all night long. Oh, Erie often with the slip there. Glad that she landed okay. We do see Ariana Jackson back on the Iowa State bench as well, and her chin is taped up after she exited the court moments ago, falling down with blood spewing everywhere. There she is, and a good sign for the Cyclones, who lead it by two. Screen for jump for the lead. In and out. Here he often gets a rebound. Coach 
Coach Bill Fenley told us about you know, his concern, not only for Stanford's length, but their athleticism. He just said that they're more mobile than any post players that we've seen throughout the course of the season. And there's some terrific post players in the Big 12 Conference. But yeah, you put together the athleticism, the length, mobility, the spacing and the guard skills, especially what Erie offense bringing to the table tonight. It's just really hard to figure out how to position yourself. Two for two for Erie Offen. Cameron Brink checks in. Kiki's got 28. On 24 shots, Roy. And the next highest field goal attempts, Hannah Jump with 11. I'm so surprised to see tonight Cameron Brink with just nine field goal attempts. Erie Offen went over 1,000 points for her career Friday night in the win against Norfolk State. She's backed that up with a 28 spot so far this evening. Bellinger with a mask off on the floor. Chance to go to the Sweet 16. The winner does exactly that. Ryan, the spin and the triple. And a new career high of 31. Well, Ryan might be leaving here with a 40 piece tonight. Very often traveled. The Cyclones have it leading by three. And again, we've mentioned it several times. You can feel the nervousness of this arena. A capacity crowd, a partisan crowd. Stanford fans everywhere sensing exactly what happened a year ago. Maybe on the verge again. Ryan kept her dribble alive until now. I feel like Addie Brown's going to pop a shot here. Timer at six. Ryan a deep three. And the rebound cleared by Natabu. Two players hit the deck hard, and let's see, boy, Natabu fell down, and Erie often did. Everybody appears to be okay. We have oh, seen some tumbles. Yeah, that had me holding my breath. Both players. Gosh, Lynn is so awkwardly. I mean, you'd love to see this, so just fighting to the absolute end. This is everything that March wants to be. Loose balls, going after it, hard play. Wow. Lapolo picked up yeah. her third in that sequence. Yeah, Lapolo is on the front. I'm just glad, again, everybody landed safely on that play. That was scary. Brown will track down the deep pass in the backcourt. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Maddie Brown, the freshman, working against Brink, the senior. Got caught in the backdoor cut, Ryan. And she traveled before the bounce pass. Wow. And Addie Brown asking for her teammates, hey, keep moving, get in motion. You gotta have that spacing. You can't just go with the one-on-one -on -one dribbling and hope somebody frees themselves up from the defense at the last minute. And that's what Addie Brown, you know, she used a lot of energy on that play, Roy. All that dribbling. And Addie, Audie Crooks, excuse me, now back in the game. Four fouls for the freshman. Unanimous Big 12 performer, all conference. Erie Offen, the lead down to one. Kiki with 30. Crooks has position on Brink. Brink stuffed her. And Crooks fell down hard and look out. And Cameron Brink just fouled out. Brooks in pain, waves to her head coach indicating she's okay. And that is how Cameron Brink's career ends at Maples Pavilion. A tough call to make, because it could have easily just, easily been a tie-up underneath. And good to see Crooks back up after she took a hard fall and a bounce with her head here's the foul here you see yeah brink she does reach over instead of up was that not a shooting foul it was to me officials indicate otherwise brown and ryan some friendly fire and a lot happening here approaching two to play now that really could have fired emily ryan up we just got called for a travel a minute ago ryan took a shot in the face and harry often kicked it well, we've mentioned several times the physicality between these two teams. It is front and center yeah, in our fourth quarter. 
Shot clock. Reset back to 20 after the kickball. Brooks on Erie Offen. Determined expression. Erie Offen with the block. Here comes Stanford. Kiki has been the key for the Stanford Cardinal tonight. Incredible performance that time, the biggest defensive play of the night. Erie Offen wants it instead of three. And it goes! Brooke Dimitri! to the party, Brooke. Wow, what a big shot. Wow. Right? Well, the three ball has been good on both sides at times, but Brooke Dimitri said, you gonna give me that space. What a shot in front of her bench, just infusing life into this Stanford Cardinal bench. The crowd, the whole energy of the building changed with that shot. The lead at two for the home team, Stanford. Emily Ryan on the other side, as we present you our Get More, brought to you by Geico. A career-high 31 to have Iowa State in position. And the Cyclones were sitting pretty moments ago before that Dimitri three. A good three-point shooter, but an unexpected star with the shot of her life. If you're the Cyclones, Bill Finley. You're good. Stay calm, right? Plenty of time. You're down two. It is about this possession getting a good shot. Maddie Brown on Dimitri, the runner. Oh, glass and we're tied. No back down from the freshman, Addie Brown. Right, and for Stanford, you don't waste time. You keep the ball moving. Everybody in the white jersey got to do something. And I'd go right back down to Erie Offen, let her post up, face up, and take Crooks off the bounce. Under a minute to play. Again, Dimitri, not this time, and the rebound controlled by Bristow. I, I don't know, Roy, if I'm Sanford, I'd rather see an eerie often take that one-on-one. -on -one. Nervous moments in Maples. Brown gets it back. A three, short. She taps it to herself, and the shot clock resets. And Ryan will take a deep breath. For the right to go to the Sweet 16. Crooks with position inside. No! Ariafa, yes! And Tara Vandeveer wanting to talk things over with her team in a tie game. 11.5 seconds remaining. Both teams with still a foul to give. And now Stanford with one possession can punch its ticket to the Sweet 16. What a game, what a moment, and now if you're Tara Vanderveer, one of the best coaches in college basketball history, yeah. the all-time winningest coach in college basketball history, what does she need to draw up here for her squad? Can I break off and go over there, be a sideline reporter for a minute? I want to listen in on this huddle, Roy. You're talking about greatness right now, the all-time winningest coach in NCAA history, talking about where does this ball need to go? Who are our shooters? The tie ball game, we've still got two time or timeout left. A foul to give. Don't panic. To me, eerie often. Go ahead and set her screen. Get her the ball up about that elbow line, maybe the mid mid lane. One swoop, power, go in strong. Dare these officials. Dare them to call that foul. Go in strong. Heartbreak a year ago in this same moment against Ole Miss. Stanford trying to break back through. And a basket will do that. Foul to give for both sides. Iowa State with two timeouts remaining. And Stanford with just one. Boy, this game has delivered in so many ways. Nine ties, 12 lead changes. Cameron Brink in her final home game has fouled out for Hall of Fame head coach Tara Vanderveer. And it's Erie offense time in all likelihood.
Nitri's got to get it in, and here we go. Ari Oppen. Lapolo. And bumped with a foul to give, so a smart play. And Bill Finley telling that to Emily Ryan right now. Next foul results in free throws. Lapolo has it. She's got to go. Four seconds, three seconds. Ari Oppen. Not a bad shot. You get it to the player you want. You'll take it. How about Crooks trying to take that charge? That's the gutsiest play I've seen her make this tournament. Four fouls on the freshman, Woo. Audie Crooks. There was contact, but no whistle. <laughs> Good no whistle, too. Let's take another look at that last sequence. Here we often the player you want to shoot. She's got a 30 piece already. There you go. She gets the ball at the free throw line area. Got that elbow, a swoop, a strong move. But Crooks, how about that lateral movement? Roy to cut off the baseline. I mean, Iriofen is quick. Look at Crooks moving side to side, getting it done on defense. Very often frustrated with that one. She had plenty of time, though. I'm thinking maybe a step back and then a crossover. She could have had herself a little layup, but that's a guard skill you're going to see Erie often have and develop probably by next year. Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt coming up as soon as we're done here in Stanford. Winner of this game goes to the Sweet 16. The loser will see its season come to a close. Brooke Weisbro, Roy Philpott. So for Stanford, you're without Cameron Brink, the number two pick in the WNBA draft coming up next month. Kiki Arioffen has been fantastic. I don't know, is there a mental advantage to start OT, considering what we've seen in this final quarter? You know, I think if you're Stanford, you do, you're rolling out there with who you got. You know, you're not thinking, unfortunately for them, they're not thinking about Cameron Brink being on the bench, other than playing for her. They're saying, we got our five, Arioffen's got to step up. This is her team next year. This is her team. So right now, it's her team. And she's been the one to get it done tonight, her hand a jump, the senior last night on the floor for jump as well here in Maples. And for Iowa State, you, you just got to continue to play as if this is a, a game that's winnable and staying calm. That's their best weapon is them staying calm. We saved the best for last, the final game on this Sunday to determine who's going to the Sweet 16. Ah, but it's Monday back east. So good morning, everybody on that east coast. Thanks for is. staying up late with us. We appreciate each and every one of you. Crooks and Iriafin, and the tap control by Stanford. Overtime underway. Crooks with the four fouls. Iriafin, elbow jumper. Ryan the rebound. A career night for number 11 for the Cyclones already. Crooks will back it down low. Mary often controls. Well, the shots that fell against Maryland, an undersized Maryland squad, have not fallen the same consistency tonight with Erie Offen and Brink patrolling the low post. So actually, I'm noticing too, Roy, like her shoulders aren't always square now to the baseline, and that's because Stanford's defense is forcing her to shoot a little more off balance. Hannah Jump was on balance. Stanford back in front. And rather than being able to square up and kind of get that easy lay in, Audie Crooks is having to use angles tonight, as has Emily Ryan. They've done them well. A sensational crossover. Wide open for three. Iowa State back in front. Blazing. Emily Ryan been killing it all night long. Y'all heard about Audie Crooks Friday night. How about a 34 point evening? Here he up and in a chance for three on the other end. It's Tara Vanderveer Vanderveer. <laughs> on the floor. I hope that was in excitement. It doesn't look to be that way. They're watching her get back to the bench. Fired up. Tara Vanderveer wants to see her ladies win this game in advance. She had a brief word with Nunu Aguera. More importantly, here he often at the line. And Audie Crooks just fouled out of the game. Oh, what a tournament for that young woman. Blows a kiss to the crowd and her supporters. We'll, we will look forward to seeing Audie Crooks in uniform.
Well, you think about the future to play women's college basketball. Juju Watkins, Audie Crooks is a part of that conversation. Caitlin Clark moves on to the WNBA as the number one draft pick next month. Crooks will be a name to remember for a long time. The Stanford lead is two. Bellinger fell down and Ryan quickly picked it up. Emily Ryan, what other tricks does she have up her sleeve tonight? Natabu inside, no. Last touch by Aguera, six on the shot clock. It looked like Aguera got a piece of that ball as well. And, and remember, Tar Vanderveer sprinted out on the floor to have a very strong message. And Nunu looked at her and said, I, I got you, I got you. So it was received. Loud and clear. Six on the timer. And a foul called. So Lapolo picked up her fourth. Iowa State with now 20 to shoot after the foul call. Dangerous toss. Brown has it. Brown for three. And the lead. Wow. Stone cold from downtown for the freshman. Addie Brown. Lapolo. And the response. High level hoops on the farm. Cardinal back in front. Ryan was bumped and lost it out of bounds and Aguera came up with a stop. And she just tapped the side of her thigh and just said, let's go. This game has been epic, my friend. An instant classic. Best game of the day and a turnover. Bellinger with a steal. Neither team with a foul to give. Halfway home in our first overtime. Ryan, the tabu against Iriopin. Ryan open for a moment. Up and in, the bucket for Bristow. Tied at 74. Ten ties, 16 lead changes. This game has featured a little bit of everything tonight. For the right to go to the Sweet 16, wow. Ariopin with 35. Ryan will feed the post. Tied at 76, Jalen Bristow. How about the night Jalen Bristow has had and the way that she's able to get herself into position deep late in this game. Two, she's shooting. 100% from the floor, three of three with eight boards. That's huge. And the seven points badly needed with Crooks on the bench after fouling out. Here he often attacking oh, yeah. at a new career high for 44 in white. You felt that coming. Couldn't stop it, but you knew it was coming. Can Iowa State somehow respond again? The seal for Ryan, the crossover by Ryan, and the foul. And who do they get with a personal? It'll be free throws. And it's Aguera. And the sharpshooter, Emily Ryan. Claflin, Kansas, a senior. Incredible game she had in the 20 point comeback win against Maryland on Friday night. 14 dimes. This evening, it has all been about points. And a bunch of them, 34, in fact. Not only Ryan has a career high, and she doesn't even look like she's breaking a sweat. Tied at 78. Under a minute to go in overtime. Erie often was crushed and fell down hard. And for Natabu, that's her third free throws. For the Cardinal to go back in front. And the moment of truth for Kiki Ariafin. Trying to put her team in position once again. 
has been perfect at the line tonight. Nervous moments for all sides. Stanford by two. And Maples comes back to life. Ryan gets it back. Plenty of time to shoot. Brown's wide open. That's better spot, and it is again. Iowa State with the lead. More drama than a junior high lunch table here on the farm. Let's go. This game has all the emotions. If y'all are still up watching this on the East Coast, we appreciate you. Sanford, the response, Dimitri. The Cardinal have the lead back. And a timeout called by Iowa State. Brooke Dimitri has come up with two of the biggest three-pointers she may ever connect on in right. her career tonight. None bigger than that one right there to give the Cardinal the two-point advantage. It was her three that brought this whole place back to life. Remember that one? And then now, every shot bigger than the next. Addie Brown, huge for the freshman. A great pass by Ryan to drive and dish and for Brown to fill the lane. And then Dimitri, she's just a catch and shoot quick. It's great to see her have the night she's had. A huge shot for Dimitri with Brink fouling out of the game. The Cardinal trying to get a win here after being knocked out as a number one seed from Ole Miss last year. Does the two seed have enough? 18.4 seconds, we'll find out. Now the winner of this game advances to the Sweet 16. Cyclones have been there six times. The last time, two years ago, Stanford, it feels like, under Tara Vanderveer, the Hall of Famer, has been there more times than you can count. But you mentioned it, the loss to Ole Miss in the second round a yeah. year ago continues to sting right up until tip-off tonight. Winner of the Lady Vols and Tennessee tomorrow, 4 o'clock Eastern on ESPN, waits the winner of this game, and no doubt, Wes Moore, Kelly Harper watching this game, even though it's really late back east and wondering, <laughs> is it ever going to end? It has been an incredible show of grit. And how about the offensive production in overtime for both sides? A combined 32 points, 17 for Stanford, 15 for Iowa State. Wow. All right, if you're Bill Finley, are you going for the win? Are you looking to tie and try to get this one to a second OT? I'm okay with going for the win. Think about the way they've been shooting the three ball tonight. I'm thinking you give that ball to that young woman right there, Emily Ryan, number 11. Put it in her hands, let her finesse, let her create, and then let somebody else fill in behind her, maybe Addie Brown, to hit that three. Emily Ryan, six of nine from behind the arc tonight. Iowa State as a team, 12 of 19 in terms of three-point shooting for head coach Bill Finley. And they need one more to have a chance to keep this thing going. You've got some deadly three-point shooters in there. Remember, Bellinger has hit some. Addie Brown can. Of course, Emily Ryan has had the night. So you got three three-point shooters along with some solid post players in there. If you're Stanford, you want to contest. If you got a foul, foul. The worst that can happen, foul hard, and you put them on the line and make them earn it to tie this game. Cyclones, top ten of the country, and three-pointers made coming into this game. Quick look to Brown, throws it up. No! Dimitri, the rebound! And Dimitri was fouled after securing possession. An outstanding free throw shooter and clearly was hacked on the carom. Good position by Brown. But great defense. Look, that's good defense. Brown split the defenders, but no one came and got any peace. And she just lost her balance there. And Brooke Dimitri tonight being a hero. First free throws of the game, 82% on the season. The next one, the most important one, a chance to make it a two-possession game. And she does. 
Iowa State with two timeouts remaining, and Bill Finley elects to use one here. And it's not over yet, but advantage Cardinal after the miss by Brown, the rebound, and the free throws by Brooke Dimitri. And for Cameron Brink, her final game in Maples Pavilion. All oh, the emotions of this moment. This has been an emotional moment for 40 minutes and then five more minutes. Well, you got to think about just the effort these young women have put out tonight. I mean, we, we've we watched some amazing games you and I together. I think this one might just have risen to the top here. I think it tops them all, <laughs> yeah. especially in postseason play. We've called a number of massive upsets in Iowa State with his team from Ames. We're not going anywhere next year either with all of these talented freshmen. Think about that. Do they need the three or do you go for the quick bucket? Uh, no, you need a three right now. A quick shot three. I'm trying to get a screen open for Bellinger or Ryan or Brown. Tabu has it. Ryan gets it. Was clipped. No whistle. Inside and out of bounds. Cyclones need a turnover or a quick foul to have a shot. And a timeout called, Tara Vanderveer. 6.3 seconds remaining. Some last minute instructions, and at this point, just trying to get the basketball inbounds, right. and we'll see what happens. I mean, anything goes, you want the ball in the hands of your best foul shooters right now. Another possible strategy, you throw that ball all the way over here in the backcourt, try to burn off whatever time you can. I mean, the worst thing that could happen to you is Iowa State gets a steal, a three, and then they'll be right back into this game. So for Stanford, it's about securing the pass. Eye contact, go meet the ball, and hold on to it. Hold on for dear hold life. Well, nobody said it was going to be easy for the two seed, Stanford. One more victory means 30 on the slate this season. They'll advance it after the timeout. And Erie Oppen was fouled. Now, Brooke, you mentioned it a few moments ago. Audie Crooks put up 40 points Friday night in the comeback against Maryland. Guess who has a chance for the 40 piece this evening? Oh, another, she said. another face of college basketball next season. And Kiki Erie Oppen, 39 on the board and two free throws to come. What a game. What a moment for Stanford. 40 for Kiki Irioff and the junior from L.A. Well, Audie Crooks has made herself a household name with just one night of basketball, but Kiki Irioff says, I see a 40 piece. Let me add one to go. 41 points on 30 shots, a new career high. And the largest lead of this game comes at the end of overtime, a six-point advantage for the Cardinal. As we take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance, no surprise. Yeah, she's been doing this all night, stepping out, hitting shots, and then she started to get more aggressive as the game went on. Her defense was clutch. These types of bang-bang plays that create physicality and presence in the game, then you got the compliment with the touch. My favorite part about Erie Uppen's game tonight, Roy, has been her ability to get after the offensive rebound, to keep plays alive. Like she's been diving on the floor, leading to second shots. And you see the night she's had a career high for Miss Kiki. So the answer is clear. Kiki, do you love me? Sounds like basketball game loves her tonight. 41 points for Miss Erie Uppen. Now the Cyclones down to Needing several miracles just to have a chance. And the Bring family taking it all in. Daughter fouled out in the fourth quarter. But she has been there and engaged with this team after fouling out. And providing support for her teammates. A steal off the inbounds. And that will do it. Stanford survives in overtime. The Cardinal back to the Sweet 16.
but what a fight to the end. I mean, you hate to see one team lose in this game because it's just, this is one of the most epic games we've witnessed in person. The performance from the young guns of Iowa State, Audie Crooks and Tara Vanderveer having a moment. You know, we certainly cannot believe the amount of highlights, high-level plays, just incredible game here at Maple. So Stanford, the number one seed last year, they don't survive coming here as the two, about to head into the ACC next year. A lot of changes. The Tara Vanderveer finishes with the win here this year at Maple Pavilion. Final game for the Cardinal as members of the Pac-12 in this arena. And Cameron Brink will advance to the Sweet 16. She's already won a national championship in her career. It wasn't the night she planned for, but she'll take it as the Cardinal find a way.